Hey, this is Matt Winning at winningstrike.com, and today we're going to talk about what Louis Simmons taught me, what you saw on the West Side vs. the World DVD, was it true, and some other things that I picked up along the way. So let's talk about that. Two thousand and five, I graduate with my master's in biomechanics, and I move over to Columbus full time. Um, and this is where you start seeing in the West Side vs. the World documentary me coming into the picture at Westside. Keeping in mind that I've been going in there and out of there from 99 to 05 and now I'm actually a full-time guy. So I get there and it's on now because now I'm not a guest, I am a lifter. Um, we also recruit and let in Greg Panora, which ends up becoming a multiple world record champion. He's still one of my good friends. Um, Phil Harrington, which was one of the best squatters at 181. Chuck Vogelpool was starting to become out of his prime but still a massive presence in the powerlifting world. Um, and we had a lot of other guys that were up-and-comers and, and good lifters in themselves. Um, and then that's where I started to realize that, you know, at becoming a full-time group guy is that I was responsible for coaching. But by that time, I was so good at technique and form, but I was also educated that I started writing articles for Westside Barbell. So a lot of the articles you'll see from 2005-ish to seven, um, a lot of those articles are written by me. Um, and Louie and I created a great friendship. Uh, but the downward phase of that, which, which was not mentioned in the West Side versus the World documentary, was um, Louie always knew that I wanted to be a head strength coach at a pro football team. That was kind of my dream job, as it is almost anyone, in strength conditioning. And I go and interview for a first assistant job at the Cleveland Browns when Buddy Morris was still there. And although it was a great moment for me because I was going to be hired in as a pro strength coach, keep in mind I'm only one down from the head guy at a pro team right out of college. I mean that's pretty crazy. Um, it was kind of it was kind of bad for Louis and I's relationship because I think Louis felt that I was just using West Side as a stepping stone and that I didn't have my full heart into breaking world records. So looking back now, 15 years later, I think some of that was an issue. The other big issue was I started to realize that training the classical um, West Side template, which was, you know, speed day turns into heavy and max day is max true maximum effort, 110% every workout. I started to realize that I did not really adapt well to those, ex those exercise types and techniques. So what I did was I would train pretty hard week one, insanely hard week two, berserker like Louie wanted to train year round week three. And then week four, I would go really easy and recover. Um, and I actually got that from Vladimir Zasiorski, which is ironic. That's where Louie got a lot of his initial information. But because Louie liked so much competition in the gym, I was the thinker, and that really put a big strain on us. I was the one that every time I went to a meet, I did better. But I didn't have that go hard, go home type uh, mentality every workout. Now looking back for most of the guys that I train with, I'm less beat up. I ended up breaking more world records than maybe Chuck Wogelpool has more world records than me. Maybe Greg broke a handful more than me, but I didn't pay for any of it. Um, so the point is, is that you have to learn what works for you. It, Louis is a great strength coach if you can follow along with what the group needs, but as soon as you need something different, then it's not really a great place to be. So when Louis and I parted ways at the end of 2007, my best total was 2465. In 10 months with the same lifting equipment, um, training on my own and following my own thought processes with the help of Chuck Vogelpool, which we have another video about him in the library, um, my total went to 2665. It jumped 200 pounds in less than a year, and I went from being the fifth best in the world to the best in the entire world. And a lot of that was just recovery. So at Westside, it's a lot of what I learned was what not to do. I realized that Training true maximum effort constantly is very, very hard. It, it's, it wears you down a lot, even if you rotate exercises. So you need to have different rep ranges. And I noticed that back in that time, we were just doing a ton of singles because um, it was always a competition. And what I learned was that I, I adapted better to fives. I adapted better to higher volume. And I adapted to having more recovery. And I think that, you know, if Louie and I had a good relationship now, I think he would understand um, that some of the things that I did, I needed to do to get better. Um, at the end of the day, Louis taught me so much about the intensity that it was going to take to get where I needed to be, and he was the one that laid the foundation for me to understand 
maximum efforts and understand dynamic efforts and repetition and understanding that you can't really ignore any of those particular methods. All of those methods are super, super important. But what I started to learn was that different percentages work better for me. And that's, at the end of the day, what's important. So if you look back at the video we did about Ed Cohen, is what made Ed Cohen great is that he found a system that worked well for him, but he also devised and listened to other people's systems. And if it worked well for them, he was happy for them. He didn't have this, well, if you don't train like me, I don't like you. And I think we all follow or fall, fall into those particular traps at some point in another. You know, I've been judgmental with people not training exactly the way I train, um, and a lot of other coaches have as well. But Louis is one of those people that is that way. You know, if you don't train exactly the way he thinks that you need to do something, it's a negative situation. Eddie Cohen was never like that. <clears throat> so I kind of learned from, from um, Louis Simmons about how not to act with certain things. But at the end of the day, if it wouldn't have been for him, I would have never came across all the Soviet research. I'd have never came across how to train properly for me. Um, and I'd have never been the strength coach that I would have been today. So in wrapping up, um, I give a lot of respect to Louis Simmons. He brought about bands. He brought about chains. He brought about speed work to powerlifting. Even to professional strength conditioning, he brought about a whole open-mindedness to how to train. So if you guys can, you know, go check out Westside Barbell's website. Go check out um, winningstrength.com. You'll see a lot of similarities and a lot of differences. And it's just based on the fact of where we went with our careers. Um, so hope you guys enjoy this video. I hope it taught you something. And like I said, keep an open mind and you can learn from a lot of people, especially people that have been around a long time. Cool.